today I'm going to be doing my February wrap up. So in February I read eight books. So this is going to be my wrap up video. So the first book that I read in February was The Magical History of Mermaids by Russ Thorne. So with this book I really enjoyed the illustrations. But this wasn't really what I was expecting from this book. It does have some really great illustrations in here. As you can see there, like that one's super pretty. Like I love a lot of these illustrations in here. And it also did help me picture what some of my mermaids would look like for one of my stories that I'm working on. So I really did enjoy that about this book. So I gave this uh, three stars. I will say I wanted it to go a little bit deeper into the mythology of mermaids in here. So it does briefly touch on the um, origins of the mermaid myth throughout different cultures around the world. But I wanted something that would have gone just a little bit deeper. The next book is Sirens by Mary Schultz. I got this at my library actually from the um, kids section of my library. I have just been at the beginning of um, February. I really wanted some mermaid books, um, mermaid mythology books. And so I went um, to my library and went into the mythology section and the adult and the kids mythology section. Um, and I just grabbed a couple books um, that I thought would be interesting to read um, on mermaids. Although this is actually not about mermaids. It this really covers the original sirens um how they were first described which they were not first described as mermaids they were first described as half women half bird creatures and so this really talks about the history of that um of them being half women half birds and the mythology um behind that and how that kind of evolved into them being synonymous with the mermaids. Um, so this, I thought this was pretty well done for a kid's uh, mythology book. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. I learned some new stuff because I really didn't know much about the like original sirens, the women's uh, half women, half bird creature sirens so um of course nowadays we know sirens a lot as mermaids like i said we kind of um think of them synonymously with mermaids but that's not how they originally started off as so it's interesting to read about that the next book that I'll talk about is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley and I just do not do very well with classics. So I'm not really going to go into this one because I have a full review of this book. I'll leave it linked in the description down below. Um, I did give it a two stars like I said me and classics just do not mix very well. The next book that I'm going to show you guys is The Assassin's Blade by Sarah J. Mass. So this is a reread for me. Um, I reread it for the second time in February and it just reminded me why I love this series, why it's one of my favorites. Gave this four stars. Of course, I this is the novella, so this is the prequel to the Throne of Glass series and it really um, goes through all of the events that happened that led up to where we are at the start of Throne of Glass. So I always love seeing that. The first story 
from the first novella in here is my least favorite. I know it's important to the story and I know it's important to the events for what's, um, what's to happen next. Um, but it's still kind of my least favorite one in here. But I still love the series. This book is action-packed. It's fast-paced. Everything I love. And I love the characters. I love Sam. It reminded me how annoying Lysandra was. But I'm glad she gets better throughout the series. Um, but yeah, I really just enjoyed this one. So the next book that I'm going to talk about is Queen of Air and Darkness by Cassandra Clare. This is the third and final book in the Dark Artifice series. This one I did really enjoy, but it's not my favorite uh, Cassandra Clare book. There were some moments where I did get a little bit bored um, until we got more action scenes and then I got sucked right back into it again. And there are a lot of twists and turns with this book, which I loved. I loved um all the information that we found out and I really liked how it wrapped up in the end. I like that it wraps up nicely but some uh, character arcs are still opened which means we'll get more books with them later on which I'm all for. I really want to see more of these characters and where their story goes so I'm definitely up for that. I will say there's one kind of love triangle sort of in this that I really didn't like. Um, and it is different. It was done differently because it's not your typical love triangle where it's like I have to choose between you or you. Um, it's more of a, you know, let's do this open relationship type thing where I get to be with both of you at the same time. And I'm just not into those type of relationships. So for me, I really didn't like it and I really didn't care for it in here. But other than that, there was a lot that I still really enjoyed in this. So like I said, not quite my favorite, but I still enjoyed it a lot. So the next book I'll talk about, um, I actually lent it to uh, my sister to read. So I don't have the book with me to show you guys, so I'll put a picture of it up in the corner. Um, but it's called The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman, and it's a non-fiction book. Um, this became one of my new favorite non-fiction books. I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. I loved it. It basically talks about the 5 different love languages there are. There's um, words of affirmation, gifts, active services, um, quality time, and physical touch. And so it talks about these 5 love languages and really dives into how each of us are different and how each person likes to receive love and what our primary love language is, the way that we like to receive love. I have the, um, I have the singles edition, but I know that there are multiple editions. There's, the original one is for married couples, but then they also have one for parents, and I think there's one for teens. So I had the singles edition and that's the one I read and I really enjoy it. If you really want to learn how to have better relationships with people around you, um, I definitely recommend this book. It's awesome. The next book that I read, I read this as an ebook, and that is Bound by Kira Sato. So I'll put the cover up there. Um, I read it as an ebook, and this actually fulfilled my TBR jar challenge, which I forgot to film in my February T 
TBR video, but I did pull a challenge out of my TBR for February, which was uh, read a book about witches, and this one has witches in it. This one I actually didn't really like. I gave it two stars. This one is a YA paranormal romance, and it's about this girl named Aurelia who takes a summer job with their best friend at the Darkwood Plantation. And when she gets to the plantation, she meets a long lost relative of hers who tells her she's a powerful voodoo queen. And there's something dark and mysterious about this plantation, but we're not really sure what. And so that's kind of the premise of this book. I feel like it had a lot of potential, but it just, the execution wasn't there. So as I was reading the story, I kept thinking it feels more like a draft than a final uh, book, a final copy of a book. And there were a few um, grammar mistakes in here that probably also added to why it felt more like a draft than a final um, book or final product. But I do see the potential that the story has. I just, I felt like it was lacking a lot. I also wasn't a big fan of the writing style. And some of the characters just annoyed me. I could not connect with them. Not even a really I could not connect with her and she did things sometimes that are just annoyed me and then the way it ended it felt like the ending where where the book stops feels like it should have been a chapter ending rather than a book ending um it is a cliffhanger and I get you know a lot of books have cliffhanger endings I get that, but we really didn't get much of the story. The story was just starting to ramp up, and right when it starts to ramp up, it just stops and ends. So I felt like that should have been a chapter ending, not the end of where the book should have ended. And the last book that I'll talk about is another one that I actually listened to an audiobook, so I'll put the cover up here, but it's The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. This one is a book that a lot of people have talked about before. It's a bestseller. It's a non-fiction book, so I thought I'd pick it up and check it out, especially because i kind of been in the wanting to organize more phase. I did not really care for this one that much. The book gets to be repetitive at some points. And then the other thing is there's some good uh, suggestions and principles in here that I will take out from this book. Um, so like, you know, only holding on to things you really love, right? Not filling your life up with junk that you never use or you never need. So that's a good um that's a good principle to live by and I do like that. I will use that. Um also just being grateful for the things that you do have and even some of the organizing uh tips that she talked about in here. So some of them I do think is useful and I will use. Um, some of them I'm just like, mm, not for me, um, I'm really not going to be talking to my items or possessions as if they were alive or human, not going to start thinking my purse or talking to my socks or, you know, stuff like that, so... There's some things in here that I'm like, yeah, not for me. I will leave this part alone. And then there's some things I just flat out don't agree with. Like when she 
talks about aiming for perfection. Let's face it, we're never going to be perfect. Perfection is never going to be attainable or achievable. And you will just drive yourself crazy trying to strive for perfection. So that I really don't agree with. And just know that you don't have to take everything from this book and do everything that's suggested. You can take what works for you and leave out the rest. That's what I did. And so for anyone who's anxious and gets overwhelmed easily, I just would caution you with this book because there is a part where she talks about decluttering being one big event and doing it all at once rather than a little bit at a time and doing instead of doing room by room little bits at a time do it all at once and I can see the reason for that I can see why she would suggest that but if you are someone with a ton of stuff and you have a lot of anxiety and get overwhelmed easily I can see that process being something that can overwhelm a person and make them more anxious. So that's why I just say be cautious with some of the stuff in there. Because um, you don't want to make yourself more anxious than you need to be. So that's it. Those are the books that I read in February. Um, leave me a comment down below and let me know what books you read in February. And if you've read any of these, let me know what you thought of them. And I will see you guys soon with another video. Bye!